Welcome back, this is Yamma Jack, and today we got Spillway, Gunslinger, Suicidal, heck yeah. Biolapse on Hell on Earth is definitely not happening for that daily challenge. Uh, we're not doing Hell on Earth until I'm much better at the game, and since I'm only playing for Killing Floor 2 for the videos, I don't really get much better anymore. <laughs> I've kind of stagnated. I'm still improving, I think, but I'm, uh, I'm not really getting... Much better. I'm not. I'm not improving in leaps and bounds like I was at the start of the series. You know, only in in you know steps and other steps. Let's get a dosh up there. Oh, get out of here! Is that gonna make it? Heck yeah! There's my dosh. Ah, I was I was fully expecting that to be like massive bash from the sky, land on his face, toss his face in, toss his face and bash his face in, just a big old smack. You know, a big old little smack. Oh, I couldn't. I tried it again, and it's just—it's hard, man. Getting those smacks—they ain't easy. They ain't easy. It's a skill, and I don't have it. I want to get into writing. I used to write back in back in the day. Back in the day, I was a writer. I actually had a. My, 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 my most, my, uh, my highest performing, uh, I don't know what kind of fiction it would be called, light novel, I guess? It was, it was fanfic, um, it was kind of like an isekai e kind of thing for Minecraft, um, I don't want to give away too much information about it, because it was popular enough that if I described it, you would be able to find it very easily, um, but it got just about a hundred thousand total like views. So I think that I'm a an adequate enough writer. At least for the Minecraft community I was. I had uh, like fan art being made all the time. I had It was uh, it was good. It was really, really good. That was uh I don't I really don't want to give away too much information, but um yeah, at about at about a hundred thousand views, and uh, it was it was good fun. And then I, I never really wrote again after that. And I kind of want to get into writing again, but I'm not sure what I would want to write about. You know, I'm not sure what to write about, but I do want to write because I enjoy writing. The other thing is, is that's like a a creative output or a creative outlet. Um, and I already do D&D. &D. I already DM D&D, &D, so that's kind of my creative outlet. I don't have the, the creative juices for... Ooh, boy. That's no good. I don't have the creative juices to ran, uh, to write a story and also run a campaign. That's, that's too much creative juice. Too much creative juice for me. So I'm not sure if I'll ever actually have the time for it. Right now in the D&D &D campaign, we're currently writing, uh, running, um... In a pre-built. I'm kind of excited to get out of it, to be honest with you. Um, I chose it because I thought it might be good. I'm not super enjoying it, to be completely honest with you. Um, they seem to be into it, so like I'm happy with it. But uh, we're not too far away in the story anyway from being able to be out of it. Um, but who knows how long it takes them to actually finish it at their rate. Um, Anyway, this has been a horrible wave. Um, we are, we're in a pre-built right now, which is fine. Um, but I personally enjoy uh, homebrew a lot more. So I'm really looking forward to once we're done with this, I get to start working on a homebrew. And I might make 
I might get into writing then, and then just make the D&D &D campaign kind of follow the story of, uh, or rather, rather than railroading it, um, I might make the story kind of follow the, uh, campaign. But just having that outlet to write and, uh, create a world and characters and, and build stuff up like that would be kind of cool. I mean, the thing with D&D, &D, though, is you never know what your players are going to do. No matter how good you think you know your players, sometimes they just do really dumb things. Like, sometimes you'll you'll put together a thing. This, this happens far too often, right? And this is, this is a problem that a lot of DMs have, where um, your players will never follow the story, right? They'll always, they'll always find some other way. They'll find some way to break, like, to sequence break it and, and stuff. And it's not intentional, necessarily, but it's just with the way that they're playing the game, the story that you put together and 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 how you're running it, it's just they're not they're not doing it, <laughs> right? Um, so then you'll 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 expect them to do something else, and you're like, okay, like I'll I'll figure this out, um, and then you you put together this whole side campaign for them because they they started going off this way, and then they're like, uh, we should be nice to her, you know, we gotta. We gotta bring it back to the main story, and I'm like, I spent the entire last two weeks putting together this side campaign for you, and you didn't even do it. You just left it. Now you're going back to this other place, I'm like, this is still, you're still going off the track you were taking, you know? Because the players want to be nice to you, and like, get onto the campaign that you put together, and like, oh, well, we did find that thing, I guess we'll go and do that finally, you know? Um, like when I was playing D&D, &D, we found this, uh... We found this book, right? While we were while we were driving down the road, so we we're going down the road. We we're you know driving in a horse and carriage, um, and we were we were going down the road, right? We find this book. It's uh no okay. Uh, so we were going down the road, and then the road suddenly turns like a sharp ninety degrees, and uh, the ocean is still like next to us and stuff. We're just like. Or the ocean isn't next to us. We turn a sharp 90 degrees, and it's like very disruptive and like abrupt. Like you wouldn't expect that to be a part of the normal world. Like there's obviously some kind of magical stuff at work here. Like the road immediately turns a 90 degrees. We find this book on the ground. We pick it up. We read through it a little bit, and it's telling us about this like uh, history of some place, right? And um, so then we continue forward while somebody reads the book in the back and the the road takes it another abrupt 90 degree turn and we're back to the ocean and stuff and the road just looks like there's no turn in it it's just a a very abrupt kind of like out of nowhere kind of uh situation right so this book is you know obviously a plot point right like the nobody's gonna look at this and be like oh yeah the book doesn't matter right like the book is obviously important it's got information about a some history uh, we read it again later on, and it's telling us, like, different things. So, you know, there's obviously something with this book. we got to figure out what's going on with this book. So we, uh, we're asking some people in town about it. And uh, we find out that the town has a bit of a drug problem. Right? So we go, we take over the, the drug empire. And we're talking in character about how we're going to start up our own drug empire. Like, rather than help the town, we just take all the drug empire stuff, and then run our own drug empire, right? We're like, yeah, who cares about anything else? We're going to start our own drug empire. And this is, this is at this point a recurring theme, where we come up with just the dumbest ideas. Like, previously in the campaign, we were talking about starting a laundromat, because we were asking, like, hey, where can I wash clothes? And we're like, well, there's a river just down the road. We're like, oh, so there's no laundromats around here. And they're like, what's a laundromat? Like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna have to start up a laundromat and like do people's laundry. It's we're gonna make big bucks. Um, so when we get to this drug empire. We're like, yeah, we're gonna start selling drugs. We can use the laundromat to launder the money, and uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then the the session ends, and we play again in two weeks, and uh, we're like, all right. Let's, uh, let's get back to the main story here. So we just, we take this entire drug empire that's like underground. We just cave it in, like completely cave in the entire entrance 
sealing it off pretty much entirely. And our DM's like, I just spent the last two weeks preparing for this. I have all these notes. I have all this this information about how to run a drug empire and, and like plot hooks and, and all this stuff about how to run this drug empire that you guys were so excited about last time. And you just caved it in. <laughs> we're like, we'll come back to it eventually. And uh, we continue onwards. And uh, we, we find more of this stuff where just random stuff happens. And we're like, oh yeah, no, we're definitely going to do this. Like, this is this is our next move. We make a laundromat. We make a drug empire. We, we do this. We do that. And then we're like, ah, well, I guess we should get back to the main story. And uh, everybody does it because... I mean, you want to do the main story, right? Like, as a player, you're already involved in that. Like, early on in the campaign, your, your DM's going to bring you in. And you're going to get attached to the campaign in some form or another so you're already attached to it right you want to figure out what's going on you want to succeed um but while you're playing in in an individual in any individual moment you might forget about those those plot hooks and you might be be more focused on the now right you might be like yeah well i want to do this like we just found a good opportunity to set up a drug empire let's do it and then the next session you're like yeah but we do actually have to go rescue this dude and so you go do that, and the DM's like, I just spent so much time preparing for something that you just threw out the window. Uh, anyway, that book, we never ended up using it anyway. It, we had that book for a year. And it would, it was like a, it wasn't a running joke, but it was, uh, it was almost a running joke. Like, we would talk in, uh, at the end of a session, be like, yeah, next time we should really look at that book. And then we get back next time, and be like, Instead of the book, how about we just go buy a bunch of horses and run that way really, really far? <laughs> go somewhere random. <laughs> and he's like, I have nothing prepared. It was, uh, it was always good fun. Because as, as the DM, you want to try and prepare stuff that you think your players are going to do. And then your players, they don't even, they don't even know what they're going to do. Right, like your players have no idea what their plan is before they start doing it. Really. So you gotta like think, okay, well what's what are they gonna probably do? Like what what would their characters do? Like what's their characters' motivations and you know whatnot. And it's like Okay, so they're gonna go around killing everybody, I guess. Can't really plan for that. Um they'll just end up in jail. <laughs> But uh, it's always it's always good fun because your character your your players want to make things easier for you, and then in doing so, they go against everything that you planned, and uh, makes it way harder because <laughs> you wouldn't expect them to actually follow the main storyline that they're doing. So when they try to do it to be nice to you, you're like, I didn't even think you'd do that. Uh, anyway, moral of the story is just uh, just play D and D and have fun. That's that's the important part. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.